we can talk we after. Hold on. There we go. All righty. All righty. I don't even know what day it is. What what day is it? Thursday? Thursday the 11th. Poor, poor John. John. John hasn't been feeling well. For those of you who don't know, um, that is the legend John Zappis. Uh, for those of you who don't know who John is, um, John is the nephew of Ed and Lorraine Warren. John has been in the paranormal field. The dinosaurs, I think, were running around when John started. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ wasn't even around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and John is probably, you know, everybody in the field knows John. Everybody in the field admire John and if you don't know uh if you're in the field you know who John is and you know even the younger guys all know John John's done more than any of us will ever do had learned more about the paranormal than most of us will ever learn and 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 they're he's a performer they're actually saying will he be performing tonight the number one hit the love tub and I'm not kidding <laughs> I, I love tub <laughs> I tried to find the video. I couldn't find it in time. Though. I, I good, wanted to good, find it. Good, good, good. Much, 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 much better live, as you can tell. <laughs> so anyway, the, the, the reason, the, the, the main reason that um, I was going to have John come on was because um, we are doing three events together this year. The first one being March 9th at Camp Evans, where the love tub just so happens to be in the basement. Um, that event only has two tickets left. So oh, really? I was going to use this to promote that, but that's going pretty good and should be sold out. If you want the last two tickets, just email New Jersey Paranormal. But uh, other than that, it's always great to talk to John. We haven't spoken to John in it's been a, a couple of months now, right? Uh, you know, everybody's been very, very low key after this this time around. I have to say it's been very quiet on my end too, going back and forth with a lot of people too. So it's the holidays, it's the yeah. new year thing. It's you know, but everybody seems to be jumping back in now. I think yep. I see a lot of people booking. Um I wanted to talk to you. I, I was thinking before we went on here and about again, you've been involved in the paranormal since you were a kid, really. From from that time to where like the paranormal was kind of taboo still back in those days where people didn't really, you know, there wasn't social media and all that stuff. Wasn't open. Yeah. What do you think about like now with like everybody being on YouTube and all of these events going on? Like what does someone like you think of that kind of thing? Did you ever think it would get to the point where people are just everywhere doing no. this stuff? No, no, I never, never thought we'd see it to, uh, the extreme that it is. I mean, it, you know, it's interesting if you, because a lot of us are on social media, we go back and forth on a lot of different postings and it amazes me the amount of people that just don't watch anything paranormal anymore. They just don't even turn in, you know, tune into, to watch the TV shows, whether it's on YouTube or this or that. But the big thing I know that uh, seems to really spark and, I'm, I wasn't even really all that familiar with it. Are these bloggers, the, yeah. the, the kids that are doing the blogging and the going TikTok. out and doing yeah, the TikTok things? It, uh, that seems to be a, um, a fairly popular thing right at this point in time. But it amazes me the amount of people that just don't watch the paranormal shows anymore. They just don't. And if they do, they'll, they'll come right back and just say, eh, I tried watching this new one and same old, same old. And, you know. So it, it, I never thought I'd ever see it get to that point where people were like over it, so to speak, you know, with tuning in to watch the shows and watch a lot of the different things. But I think we're at that point. Yeah. You know, we, we you and I talked about this before, about how, um, like you said, these these you were on TV, um, these other people that are on TV, ghost hunters, ghost adventures, uh, you know, ghost Brother, all these people that are on TV, mm -hmm. um, there are more people watching YouTube videos and TikTok videos than watch those shows when, when they were airing, which is, again, for people like us who are older, that's such a foreign thing. But younger people under 30, they're, they're looking at the phone. They're, yeah, but don't, don't you think there was a, a, a 
the scale was kind of tipped when they went over to regular TV to no, the streaming no, platform, and you no. just kind of saw a, a, that's where the trickle. I think change younger started. people aren't watching television; they're not really. I watching agree, but you still on... have our generation that are TV well, Nobody are TV watching. Us. But I'm just saying that it <laughs> seems like it seems to me when it went from regular TV and your regular networks, and it started going into the the Paramount Plus and all of the different changes that were happening that's when you started to see the changes yeah. really take place i th i think that's when it was more prevalent it came right. more to the forefront because yeah. it made because it made it more obvious so again you know uh listening to a lot of the kids today because i lecture all over the place at you know colleges and universities and things like that and i always do surveys i think that's very important to do that how many of you watch the shows? How many of you go to conventions? How many of you go out and investigate? I do ask all these different types of questions. And it amazes me when, you know, uh, we're in our small groups or doing something. You know, you start talking about uh, my generation, our, you know, the older generation. These kids have no clue who these people even are. No. I mean, yeah. you start talking about, you know, Ed and Lorraine. The only way they know Ed and Lorraine is if you say conjuring. Yeah. <laughs> then, then they'll know who Ed and Lorraine are. You know, Hans Holzer. I mean, you know, Barry Taft. Some of these people that are, have been in our industry for years and years, these kids have no clue, you know, who any of these people even are today. Yeah, but don't you think, um, and I don't know if you're you're okay talking about it, but um, the, 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 um, the, the, uh, the, 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 uh, blah, what's the word? The ability to, do what you want to do creatively, structurally, um, on YouTube or TikTok or whatever. You're not, you know, hostage of the network. And I don't know if that's good or bad because I've never been on network television. You have, but you know, a lot of these shows, and I know people have the attitude where they are kind of structured, scripted. It's somewhat. So and, the barriers yeah, are very formula, gone. formulaic. Is, is that the word? And I think people doing this on their own, whether on YouTube with big followings or TikTok, they really just get to do what they want. You know what I mean? For now. <laughs> well, you know, again, it's going, John, it's going to reach a point where even with, uh, you know, YouTubing and just putting anything you want out there. You know, again, you, you still have, have that situation where I'll watch a few of these different things and I just sit and cringe and hear some of the stuff people repeat, you know, locations and names on residential property and, you know, showing this or showing that. The, again, that's still going to catch up sooner or later, whether it's on YouTube or what, because, you know, with that regular networking and with streaming, you still have to be guarded no. with a lot of things and you have to be careful. You know, that right. business is business. Right. So now, do I think that's going to eventually catch up with rules and regulations, just like with, you know, uh, TV and with streaming? Yes, I do. Now, streaming is a lot more flexible than right. our regular TV. I mean, you know, again, the, the, there's been different things. I'll watch it, sit there and go. If I ever tried to do that, I, you know, I, I, I would have heard from all the attorneys. So, again, you know, it amazes me that, you know, the more liberal, if you will, the way things are today. But that's a good point, because um, one thing that I'm sure TV and networks do get right is um, the, the way they can protect um, the locations, the, um, the, the people involved as far as the clients or the representatives and, and make it so that, you know, there is some protections built in for everyone as much as they can, whereas there is no liability for people just turning on their phone and going into a home or a can or, you know, haunted location and just doing whatever, and you know, these people, they get into whatever. Some well, when you're taping you know? and something happens on a TV show, you can cut out something Edited. you don't want yeah, to appear yeah. or may not be appropriate. And when you're doing live on a TikTok, it's everything goes. There is no cutting But, but out. you, on Haunted Collector, again, I don't know. Are you okay with talking about the show, Haunted Collector? Because it, oh, even... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Because you and I talked. When I first met you... I talked to you about the show and, and, and the way it was always about finding the object, finding the object, uh, the object was always causing the haunting. And 
that wasn't your original idea for the show, right? No. No, my original idea was to, again, um, paranormal, supernatural, going in, investigating, doing, you know, our thing. If we come up against haunted items, that would have been a dynamite, you know, perspective with intermingling different things. You can't do that. You have to be structured. So when, when I say, stru- see, I, it, any of us that have done TV and have worked in it, learn that there's a structure. I mean, and my best analogy, and I always tell people this, you go to work at eight o'clock in the morning, you leave at five o'clock, you got bosses to report to, you got certain amount of things you got to do, certain things you have to do. It's the same thing with TV. And people go, no, it's your show. No, you're working for the network. You're working for the sponsors, you you know, again, they're the ones that are paying you. So <laughs> they're giving you your paycheck, so to speak. So again, a, a lot of things have to be taken into consideration. You know, people don't stop and realize a lot of times with um, sponsors, you, you could have certain sponsors, you know, you say certain things or do certain things, you offend them. Yeah. That, you know, it's a normal thing, but these were all the learning curves, you know, that I learned as I was going through the process with it and learning how to understand certain things that there's reasons why, you know, sometimes you can't say certain things or there were certain items that could never be shown because they were copyrighted or, you know, uh, patents were on them or, you know, it. But that's our world, and it's, it wasn't right. just the paranormal. It's the world in general. Right, it's just right. the way it is. So there's a lot to learn. And with with TV land, what they always like for all your episodes was a beginning, a middle, and an end. They, you know, again, you have to build off of different things. Now, with that, when when I talk about that, is some of your history, certain things could be researched. They have to be. I mean, you know, I laugh because a lot of people go, well, you just go to people's houses and film. No way, Jose. You can't do that. (laughs) You cannot just show up at an individual's house. Those people have to have background checks done on them. You have to make sure that they own that property. The correct people have to sign off on that property. Insurance waivers have to be put in place. There is, because I call it the machine. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into all of it to be able to pull an episode together. So thus, you know, you could have, you know, a kink. You can have different things that occur and happen right. with, you know, what happened with me like on season two. And I, you know, I, I was lucky. I had a fantastic crew that I worked with. The guys were great. The producers, you know, Rick and Keith and all these guys and, you know, uh, and, and the storytellers, you know, they would work with me, not against me. They'll go, Johnny, what do you think about this? Or Johnny, what do you think about this? And Johnny, we're able to find this out. You know, and we would just go back and forth and brainstorm, you know, with some of the things. And because I always tell them, pick my brain. There's a lot in this old head. Pick it, <laughs> you know, go, go for it. And it might help to any day would go, you're absolutely right. That makes things a lot easier. I said, I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. Cause I'm only going to shoot myself in the foot. So therefore, you know, it's me that's out there in the forefront with these guys. So, again, by by season three, it, it was, you know, uh, an interesting concept because there'd be certain areas where, you know, people would say they were having the activity and we'd go someplace else and you'd get more activity that would occur, just like we do on the ghost hunts when we right. go to some of our locations. Right. Things alter. Things change right. from time to time. So, again, same things would happen when um, – we were out shooting and doing different things. Was there, again, was there always the, because the show was called Haunted Collector. And again, you and I talked about this. What was the onus, of course, I wasn't saying scripted. Somebody said, I never said scripted. I meant there was always, there's like a hook or a theme, like Haunted Collector. Haunted Collector was about John and his team going in and the, the object was causing the activity. That's what kind of the show was about. Right. Was the onus, though, again, of the show always on finding an object? Did you ever go in there and, like you were just saying, boy, you know what? 
the addict is like, whoa, crazy active. There's somebody up there. Yeah, I found this object in the basement, but you know, did you always, you always had to find an object, right? And, but no, 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 we've had it. We, there were a couple of episodes on Haunted Collector. I did not determine that it was a haunted item. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a couple out there, but again, you, what now when I know somebody just questioned you something about scripted, right? No, it's not that these, these shows are scripted, right. but we, you have to have a base. You have to have something to work with. I mean, you know, you're going to hear, oh, my house is haunted. It's levitating. It's flying around. Aunt Tilly's haunting it. Okay. Well, who's Aunt Tilly? Or, you know, <laughs> what is some of the, you have to, you have to have information to be able to work with when, when you're trying right. to, you know, establish, just like when we do a regular investigation, right, right? we talk to people before we go in and we get a feel for what things are about. So again, quote unquote, we would call it, you know, it's a storyline, right? Now, did we go 100% by your storyline? No. You know, you'd get in and things would change. Sometimes something different would happen. I would say, ooh, good possibility we got more activity around a different item. Then the person would say, well, geez, it's funny. And then they would say, then the person that was, you know, working with us would say, well, you didn't tell me that. And I would bust out laughing and go, <laughs> that's a typical scenario for a haunting. You know, you uh, sometimes things get discovered uh, as you're filming and as you're investigating and stuff. So, but like I said, I was fortunate enough with Haunted Collector by season two and three, you know, with the producers and, and you know, um, uh, the different people working on it, structuring our show to pull it together, would always talk to me and we'd sit down, we'd brainstorm and talk about different things. And if something didn't seem right to me, I would say, no, I, you know, it, it's just, you know, and, th and they would go, why? Why do you feel that way? And I would explain it. And majority of the time they go, OK, we can understand that. And I would say, I have to live with this. You get to go back home. <laughs> this is my this is my yeah. life. Uh, you know, I do that. This is what I do. So, it's again, it, right. Yeah. I mean, you know, again, it, it, it is what it is. You know, I could take the bumps just as good as anybody else. But you know, <laughs> if there's something I can do to try and correct something. You know, I, I think that's an important element, no matter what you're doing or how you're doing it. You, you know what I always wonder about those shows, too? And I don't know if this has ever happened to you, because they usually kind of follow the same they like, film over three or four days, however long they're at that one location. Um, has there ever been, again, in three seasons, a time where you're there for like day three and nothing's happened yet? And you're like, hey, what? Uh -oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Has that ever happened? No, and, and I'll okay. I can tell you why. It's a simple fact that you know all these places are were um, already looked at. Gotcha. Are, you know, some of the research was already you know dug into. I a lot of times personally would talk to people, you know, just to get a feel, just to get a good understanding, or talk to somebody that you know might be getting interviewed or be a part of it because by season three I was you know uh involved with the producing end of it which was a fantastic tool with helping me to understand things okay. so I would be at that point be able to say okay this person is going to make you know a good person to be able to talk about something or you know uh share what their instances are and things of that nature but normally with with the fact after all the, re you know, and people say that, you know, there's three or four days that are just put into it. There's weeks that get put right. into these things, right. you know, because you have to first send out your scouting team. Yeah. That has to check out a lot of things. Then it has to go through your legal department. Then it has to go through your production meetings. Then it has to be okayed by the networks. Then it has to be okayed by some yeah. of your, I mean, it, it's amazing. Right. It's right. The whole process of all the things that are involved with, just doing you know, a TV show. It's it's absolutely amazing. Do you still have the items from those, those shows? Yes. Wow, you do? Yes. I didn't realize that because I know on the show you would you would take them and you would put them in the case and you would seal That's them. That's a good question, Audra. She said, Mr. Zaffis, was there ever a haunted object that you refused to take with you out on an investigation? Yes. There, there's been... Uh, 
many different times with items. Now, um, and I will tell you this, there, there's, I can sit back now and go, oh man, how I wish I took that. But usually in the moment, what's most important to me is what is going to help the situation. What is going to calm things down? That's the key element. All right. So if an item has to be buried and sea salt's thrown over it and holy water and, you know, all the other crazy things that I do, I will do that. If it needs to get thrown into water, you know, I will do that. You know, and again, I think about it sometimes later on and go, oh, I kind of wish I kept that. But what's most important, and I'm still this way, to be able to help a person out and bring closure or to be able to calm things down as quick as we're able to do that. So, yes, as there and there still is to this day, you know, things that, you know, I, I don't remove. There could be another reason. There could be something else tying in with something that it won't get removed. Right. So, again, it, it, there's a lot of elements and different things that you have to take in uh, to consideration when you're removing. Because, I, honestly, I don't want Grandma's five-carat diamond ring. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't. I don't. I, you know, again, and you know, when it when it comes, I think, in I, the, saw, I, think I did see about four of those in your museum. <laughs> I don't think there's any diamond rings out there, okay. not to my knowledge. <laughs> but you know, again, you know, you have to you have to stop and and think about you know uh, some of the liability that ties in right. with some of that stuff. Well, well, you know, a- you, okay. Good, 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 good example. You take grandma's five carat ring and that woman t- turns around, tells her sister, oh, I gave it to Johnny Zaffis. And she goes, well, who, who the hell are you to give that to Johnny Zaffis? Yeah. That was grandma's ring. I don't care if it was haunted. I mean, that could open up a whole box, right? You know, Bandel or his box right there on a legal level like you couldn't believe. Yeah. So, again, you know, you got to be guarded and you got to be careful with a lot of that stuff. Um, I got a couple of questions for you. Are our. are haunted objects ever to be destroyed okay yes now will i ever destroy a haunted item no and the biggest reason why is that i think it takes a certain type of individual and what i mean by that is a very spiritual person okay you know a person that's native american people that get involved with voodoo um different religions and different practices believe in burning the items right thus they know the ritual they need to go through you know usually they're in a very good state to be able to do something like that i will assist and i will help i've seen it done but i per se won't do it because i firmly 100 percent believe the fact that if you break an item or you try to burn an item and there is energy attached to that, can it gravitate towards you? Absolutely, because you're causing the effect. You're causing it to find another vessel. Huh. So therefore, it can. Doesn't mean it's going to, right. but it can gravitate towards you or someone huh. in your group. I, ju- I very, very strongly believe in that. And well, all, the di- all the different practices and the different things I've been involved with over the years, every person has always said the same thing to me. But doesn't it go down to you can't destroy energy? That's correct. Energy can never be destroyed. It can take on different forms. What intrigues all of us within the supernatural and paranormal realm is that we deal with that energy and it has an intelligence to it. Right, right. And it can manipulate and do things. That's what fascinates all of us. So again, you know, that it, that's our world that we try to figure out. And, right. you know, again, it, 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 it can never be destroyed. And it's timeless. There's no time within that whole uh, genre of energy or the spirit realm as we know it. Have you ever had an object that fooled you? Like, uh, you know, it came off as being gentle or... And, and it turned out to be dark. That was one of the questions that was asked. Absolutely. You've heard me uh, often talk about coming home one night and we had a little bridge. I live on the water, as you guys know, and right near the sound. And I was going over this little bridge, pulled over one night, leaving a case. I was having all kinds of trouble in the car. And it was a two and a half foot dial, give or take. I tied rocks to it and everything and threw it off the bridge. And before I knew it, there was cop cars coming from every different direction. 
And, <laughs> you know, so I just stood there. I froze. And, you know, and one of the cops that got out was a paranormal investigator. Oh, and, you know, and, and he walked up to me. He was shaking his head. He goes, you effing old fool. He's got to call that. An old man just threw a baby off the bridge. Oh, my Lord. He said, do me a favor. Don't do that in the day anymore. And I went, I won't. I won't. I won't. Oh, and I never have. I never I, is huh? nighttime any, and nighttime's that not any better? Yeah, because nobody can see you, but I make I, sure I, you know, I, if I'm doing something like that, no God one's around. Forbid that if some babies turn up on the shore, they're coming to your I don't want I don't want to know you. nothing. I don't want to know nothing. I played the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, everything. That is funny, man. <laughs> we got to get a blow-up doll and go get him on a bridge and throw it over. So, so here, here's another one for you. I, I go somewhere, right? Let's say I go to ABC Mansion and and... I take something out of there. I bring it home. Stuff starts happening. Do you recommend that I bring it back right away? Do you think that will mostly get rid of whatever it was if I just return it to where I got it from? Okay. I used to say yes, but I've changed my theory on that. <laughs> because once, you op once you've opened up that door and the energy is intermingling with your energy, you're going to have to take your time and research a little bit to see what the heck's happening. Okay. So now, do I know people that have called me and say, oh, I, I took this from this building and I got all kinds of problems. You know, should I bring it back? It's going to depend on what's happening. If that person's so freaked out, right? you know, I'm going to say, take it back. Yep. Okay. And let's see what happens. Right. Nine out of 10 times, everything will come right back down again. Yep. But there have been those situations. No, it just made it worse. Once they brought it home, once they touched it. It just opened up where the energies intermingled. Thus, you know, again, talking to an individual and understanding what they did could have possibly just opened it up and caused, you know, the energy to mingle with theirs. Huh. So, again, you know, it depends on it depends on the situation, depends on the person, depends on what's transpiring with the with the whole uh, genre of it. So kind of like the theory of the conjuring that they've had different families that live there, but one brought out whatever happened so it's the person who's interacting or creating that correct correct you can have you sense. can have yeah you can have people move in and out of houses you know uh, you know 10 families can move in nothing happens the boom one family moves in boom all kinds of crazy stuff started happening good example amityville right. the haunting in connecticut right. i mean you know these are your typical scenarios where there wasn't any paranormal activity reported previously, but right. then afterwards there were. You brought up a good point too about liability. And I don't know if we've ever talked about this. Um, you had mentioned like, you know, doing your research and your diligence on a property, especially if somebody says my home is haunted, you know, you, you, you interview the people, you know, you do your diligence with the property. If the property, let's say it's an apartment, it's a complex, five family, four family, whatever. Um, I've had those instances where someone calls me and says, hey, where I live is haunted. And, and I say, do you own it? And they say, no, I'm a renter. And I said, well, here's the problem. You need to have yep. permission from the landlord for us to come in there. And they don't like that. But the truth be told, like you, there, you were saying, there is a liability issue. Yeah, in New Jersey, Absolutely. there's a law you have to reveal that. You have to reveal if your place is haunted or if there's... Yeah, but if the landlord is saying it's not and these people come in and that's you're a You're affecting their property you, Yeah, value. but you only, have to, you only have to reveal if you're asked. Right. If the, yeah. if you're not asked, you don't have to reveal. Yeah, but let's say the landlord right. never had a, anybody in there who ever had any kind of experience. And now this one person is saying something's going on. Oh, Yeah. Oh yeah, that 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 turns into uh, a total nightmare. Exactly. You, you have you have a uh, a landlord that owns a piece of property. They're having a haunting. They bring paranormal people in. Right. Next thing you know, the the landlord is informed of it. The land the landlord's flipping out because the value of the property just decreased. Yep. Yep. But today it doubles. But that's besides. <laughs> <the point. laughs> that which uh, which is something Absolutely. else I don't understand. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, um, again, it it, it can. It can get very, very, very crazy, very crazy. You know, again, 
Um, that's why, same thing with me. First thing I ask, do you own the property? You own the property? Okay, there's no problems. If you're renting it, that could be an issue. It could cause a problem. Right. You know, I have found a lot of times with people like that, to call, talk to the landlord. The landlord will call me and talk to me and go, gee, you know, I don't know what to make of it. He right. goes, this is, yo. I said, well, it's a double-edged sword because, you know, if they're having an issue and they're renting it, you know, again, then they can't stay there. It, so, again, it, it could get very convoluted. Yeah. It, could get, it could get very, very crazy. You know, I do not personally like working on multi dwellings. I really don't because they get too, it's too difficult because you, you can have a, a two or three family house. One family's got the issue going on. You got another family that, you know, is very religious. Then you got another family that doesn't believe in anything and then fights break out and arguments. Break, oh, it, get, it could get crazy. It could get crazy. And then you can I, come to find out it's really not the place. It's the, it's the person that generated it. Yeah, and then you then you get everybody pissed off at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the thing too. Um, I, you know, I, I I've watched a lot of these shows. I've been involved in a lot of different things, and it's not really a pattern. But I'm a little leery when I go into a home. And again, this is just me personally. I'm not speaking from for anybody else. If I go into a home and, and somebody says, you know, they're experiencing things, and I see religious artifacts everywhere. Uh, I get my guard goes up a little bit because, you know, those are the type of people, yes, there are very religious people, but there are also people that almost want a haunting. I know that sounds strange. So but it's a red flag. They, they really, they, they want for something to be going on in their home. So every little thing, if they're capturing orbs on their cell phone, um, you know, every little thing, they, they want to believe so bad that, that something is going on there and you see that, um, it kind of makes my spidey sense tingle a little. And then you interview these people and you and I have talked about this. If you run into that person, that family that has had five, six, seven, eight paranormal groups come out and you're number nine, well, what are they really hoping to accomplish? They're, They're looking, not looking for someone for to fit their scenario. They, they sometimes just want paranormal people to come in and do what we do and mm -hmm. it's a weird kind of thing sometimes i see I, i'm so accustomed to it and used to it to the fact now that it's it's a strange environment because so much of that's even changed right and again i think that has a lot to do with the media the, the, the shows and everything you know uh people look for the thrills and the chills, the best way I could put it to you. You know, they, they got all the different groups coming in, you know, right. this, this one's getting thrown across the living room. This one got levitated. <laughs> this one's got it. This one got a portal. This one's uh, got, you know, Jesus Christ coming through the ceiling. I don't know <laughs> what they all do. <laughs> this is what happens, you know, uh, again, and uh, you, you deal with all this. And a lot of times when I'm talking to a person, trying to figure out what's going, well, this group got that, and this person got that, and, yeah. and exactly. it goes on exactly. and on. And then I'll go, okay, and what do you want me to do? And they'll go, well, what do you mean? I go, what do you want me to do? They I want say, you, you to add to it. I say, you just, you just had all these different people in there. You know, well, we're looking for answers. And I'll go, half of the people you just mentioned, I know. And they would give you the answers, yeah. but that's not what you wanted to hear. No. Yeah. And they go, well, who do you think you are? And I go, well, I'm John Zaffitz. <laughs> I go, you know, that's you it. You called me here. I mean, I, it, yeah. it, it, it's different if it's like like the hidden sale house. You know, open it up for paranormal research. You got that's stuff different. Going on in your home. Yeah. 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 But, but some of these people really do just want group after group because they're almost looking for like the best narrative for what they believe is going on there. Well, and there's money in it too now. Until they Let, find let's that. be honest. People are, people are, 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 if, if you, if I get enough people to stamp that this is haunted and start that narrative, now I could start charging to have people come in here. Well, I Correct. think it's not. There is part of that. It. it is. I think that's a, a, a huge part of it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, people are, you know, looking at, you know, again, too, and John, you and I have talked about this many a times where, you know, 
I was, I'm an engineer by trade. I did that for 30 some odd years. My company downsized. I decided to go out and start chasing Casper the ghost. But I was at that point in my life where I was able to do it. The kids were grown. You know, my wife, Cher, was still, you know, working full time. She goes, see what happens. You know, go out and see. And I was fortunate enough for the past 20 years of my life to be able to support myself off of this. Okay. You know, lecturing, doing the TV show you know, doing uh, several books that we got out there. So I, you know, it was halfway decent. I can't, I didn't become a millionaire, but uh, again, you know, I was always comfortable. So uh, when people say you shouldn't make money off the paranormal, I didn't see Moses write that on anything. Did you? <laughs> I, I I don't see that on the 10 commandments. So <laughs> thou shall not make any money in the paranormal. So why is it that the paranormal is any different from any other genre of a business out there? Right. You know, some of these people buy these haunted locations and they open them up for people to come in to investigate. They charge. Well, you know, again, they got to pay the insurance. They got to pay the utility bills. They got to pay for all the different things to up, you know, keep yeah. the upkeep of it and everything. And if they're making a few dollars off of it, why not? They're putting their time and energy into yeah. it. So, I, I don't look, I've never looked at it from the perspective when somebody's, oh, well, they, they charge, you know, to come in and do things. I mean, you know, again, I, I, I don't look at it from that perspective of, you know, the Hinsdale house, perfect example. I mean, yeah. we all know the guy's not making a killing off of that. No, no. no Dan's, he, a good guy. He, Dan's a good guy. And, you know, I know what he charges, what he does. He brings people in. He, he's even let a lot of people go in there, you know. Uh, just checking things out. Yeah. But again, that, that's what he does. Would you believe I've never been up there yet? Get out of here. Oh, I, wow. I have Ooh, not been up there yet. We should not go together. One of, the, one of these days we're going to have to pull. You hear my adopted daughter speaking there? The one sitting next to you. <laughs> I'm still thinking about you throwing babies off of bridges. I'm sorry. My brain my, my is... <laughs> So far back, I need to catch up. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, again, with certain things, I understand it. And it's like, you know, I, I don't have a big issue with that. Certain places that go way, way overboard with their pricing on things, I, you know, I'm even like, wow. You but you're, when you talk about this, are, it's, are, does that include those that do a false narrative and trick people? I mean... No, of course not. I mean, I, I do. I do think that there's a fine line of where a lot of people have gone to places, and and they and we've all discovered that there are something, and things don't always happen all the time. We all know that. But what about those who purposely go out of their way to bring people in when they know there's absolutely nothing? Oh, I would never back that. But that that I think that's. I think there's no issues with charging for any well, of this. You, you mentioned as long as you're doing it ethically. Right. You, you mentioned the Hinsdale House. When we went to the Hinsdale House, I don't know how many years ago when we first met Dan, and Dan let us go up there for free. He's like, "Go ahead, go in the building." Winner. We got in there before a lot of the renovations were done. There was mm -hmm. literally a heater in one room, and we went in there in December, and it was cold. And mm -hmm. that building's kind of middle of nowhere, upstate New York ish, and um, we, we, we were there for a while. We had a good time. We didn't experience a whole lot, but I know people that claim to have, but Dan has put a lot of that money that back people in. Back into the building. Yeah. yeah that yes. building looks great. Now he was, that thing was a shack yeah. when he yeah. got it, had nothing. And yet very, a paranormal history. Um, Ed and Lorraine, I think did do an exorcism there. Um, Dan, uh, Dan and I even talked about that because we, we were going back and forth at one point in time. And I mean, even going right back to the beginning and, you know, there was one night where we were just talking. I said, Dan, I'm still not even, you know, clearing my, he goes, yes, Johnny, they were there. They did. They got involved. He goes, I researched it. He said there was even documentation. I believe if I'm correct i messed stories up but i believe tim shaw even had helped him at one point in time to be able to get the doc to be able to back it and blah 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 so again oh. yeah i mean dirt that it, you know that's like the the golden goose there so to speak um 
when a lot of times people will call me and they'll start talking about their house and they'll go, geez, we checked into it and Ed and Lorraine were here. And I go, yeah, I think over the past hundred years, they were in every freaking building that was it's like, there. It's, but, like, it's like in Jersey. They're like every historic building. George Washington was here. We're like, yeah. George Washington I, is I, everywhere in Jersey. For I, I, right? I just laugh and I'll go, yeah. Oh, oh. I go, well, it's quite possible. Anything's possible. I'm but, telling uh, you, we got to get a hold of Dan and yeah, we've we'll got to set up, up where we'll we can trip. go up with John. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's plan a trip. We'll see what we can pull together in the summertime. Wintertime, you ain't get me to not nowhere. No, 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 no not, not Buffalo. There. Not near Buffalo. I'm not going anywhere near there until I'm sure snow is. No, gone. it'll turn into the shining. <laughs> <laughs> do you know that happened to me? Oh, boy. What? So wait, we, he's, already, I, he's already a oh, bridge. Oh, no. Oh, oh, this, this story is even better. Okay. We, there was a case I was working on. It was for my aunt and uncle. Set it up. It was about two hours north of where I live, got it all set up years back. Right. And did the inter was doing the interviews and did everything. And I had one of the other, no, two other researchers with me. We got snowed in. There was like three foot of snow. Oh. So we were stuck in that freaking house for almost three days. Whoa. And I said that, and I've stuck to this to this day. I said, if I ever hear there's a, a major snowstorm or something coming, I ain't going to no freaking haunted house. I yeah. ain't going. No. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I, I have a similar, we, we were, we were investigating a place in upstate New York that was uh, vacated. The the family, there was a lot going on there. Turns out there was a kid who, who committed suicide behind the house. He hanged himself and another guy died on a motorcycle accident in the front of the house. And these people were experiencing all kinds of stuff. They left the house. They moved into the new house while the other house still hadn't sold yet. So the caretakers were trying to fix up the old house. And they're like, could you come? Things are out of control here. Could you come and take a look? Wasn't and see it a neighbor looking do? after the house? What? Wasn't it a neighbor looking after the house? Like yeah, going they was over like there. a caretaker. So we go up there and we're in the middle of nowhere. No cell phone service, nothing. Off this gravel road leads to the house and it starts snowing. You can't see your hand in front of your face. There's no street lights or anything. Pull the driveway so we're there. like, we are not getting stuck up here. So as soon as it started getting a little deep, we had to go and come back again because that would have been like a horror movie for sure. Oh, so it no. was. Well, I think you, I don't know if you've ever heard it or not, or heard uh, Jay Hawes talk about it way, way, way back, way in the beginning. We went to go work on this case up north, uh, Jay Hawes, myself, and uh, Andy Thompson. Okay. And we found out that it was in a cold house and everything. Well, the craziest thing is we had a blizzard coming back. And I had an old station wagon. The window got frozen. We couldn't get the window up. The snow's freaking piling in. Uh, Jay and I, Jay was driving because <laughs> it, it was like... It totally crazy. The other guy was in the back seat, buried under the blankets. Oh my god! I mean, it was just like this whole crazy whole scenario thing that took place. With again another case where there was this crazy story, but come to find out, we were dealing with a, a legit a cult in this town. And it really, was, oh yeah, it was totally freaky. Totally, really, freaky. like what oh, kind yeah. of stuff was going on? What were they doing? <laughs> it, it was definitely. I would say something that was uh, satanic. I mean, they, they, there was all kinds of things that were on the walls. We had oh, people no. watching us. We had people coming out from behind the trees. It, true story. You can ask Are you kidding me? Oh, jail talk. Jail talk about it. Oh, yeah. Me, <laughs> me and Zappas. Back in the day. This oh, was before. God. This was way, way. Years and years and years before anything. Before the shows or anything. Oh, and how long were you there for? Just that one time, or that? Oh yeah, no, that was enough for us. <laughs> In and out. <laughs> that's the that problem. Was the, that, oh, I, it was enough for me. That's all I know. That's the problem too. A lot, again, another good point that you bring up. Sometimes you don't know what you're getting into until no. you're in, into it, and then no. you deal with whatever you're, you're yeah. dealing with until you can get out of it. Yeah. Uh, and that's another part of this where people don't talk about it a lot is that. It's not all, uh, you know, the TV stuff. We're here to help you. Uh, you know, you got little Billy the ghost running around. We're going to tell Billy he's got to move on, and now everything's okay. There are some strange people and strange things out there. And For lack I, of a better word, people off the reservation. I, I bring up that house in upstate New York because I, I had to go to the caretaker's house I knock on the door, never met these people, talk to them on the phone. Again, gravel road, no lights. Um, I had 
we brought a knife with us just in case because we didn't know where we were going. I knock on the door. They open the door. No lights in the house, just candles. And I'm kind of looking in. And these people are like, yeah, come on in. And I'm like, uh, no, nah, that's good. Um, could you drive me to where the house? I'm like, I'll never come out of there. But you want to hear what's funny? <laughs> He's on their doorstep talking to him, and he waits outside, and he calls me. He goes, I just want to know, let you know where I am in case something happens. No, I, I told my daughter. Back. My daughter, was, I said, look, if I don't come out of that building yeah. in 10 minutes, go run it down. Because the cell phone didn't work. Go get the cops and tell them to come, because I'm probably dead. I mean, I was that scared when they opened that door. And I'm like, I don't know these people from Adam. I uh. talked to them on the phone, but they could have been anybody, you know? Well, we did, we did, again, I don't think you've ever heard me talk about this story with grandma chasing us with the butcher knife. <laughs> we got called in to do this house up on the second floor. The granddaughter's room was haunted. Didn't tell grandma we were coming to investigate. Oh, no. Little, little tiny old lady. She came home from grocery shopping or whatever. And she's in the kitchen screaming and yelling at the granddaughter. I don't want them in my house and blah, blah, blah. Granddaughter came up. She goes, make sure you stay in here. You know, my my grandmother's very upset. So I was went out in the hallway there, and grandma's down below. She's standing at the bottom of the stairs with a butcher knife like that, right? I'm telling everybody, grab your shit and jump <laughs> out the window, right? And we did. We, oh we opened up God. the window. There were three of us. It was a garage roof there. We climbed oh out onto the garage God. roof and jumped down and got oh out of there. God. The woman called me the next day. She goes, I'm so sorry. I go, are you now? Click. <laughs> oh, my God. That is funny. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's but these the are the stuff. things people don't know. Exactly. I mean, and these exactly. are funny. These are funny and hot. You know, like the after. Effect. They're funny the after, moment, you, after you've been through your them. Your life could be in yeah, danger, and it could be over. You don't. You don't know what's going to happen. No. Yeah, but today I'm even more guarded because yeah. you know, I'm sorry if I go to jump off a roof now. This stuff breaks too easy now. <laughs> <laughs> that that roof better be about that far off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, again, you have to be, you, you do, you have to be very, very careful. If there's yeah. red flags that start to go up, I, I never want to see anybody get hurt or, you know, see anything uh, happen. Could, could you go back to that other people were watching you from behind trees? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh my God. You weren't freaked out? Like, freaked like, out? Get out of here. Uh, I was the building with... empty or were people living in it? No, there was people living there. <gasps> they, they were very prominent people. In, in... Actually, if I don't know. I could be wrong on this too, John, because it's so many years ago. I think Jay wrote about it in one of the books he did. Wow. Yeah, I think if I remember right. But anyways, yeah, there was people and they ended up following us. A bunch of them got into a car and started following us. And we were just trying to get out of Dodge. Big big snowstorm was going on, and we we're just boom, and we you know, we took off, and that was the end of that. Wow, that is crazy. See, that's what I mean. I, I I've been. That's not the first time I've ever been chased uh, by people in the. Yeah, no, that's not the first time. From people in the occult. Oh yeah. Oh lord. I just, just don't. Talk, I don't talk about any of that stuff because well, it's just for think being you know, there huh? and what you were doing. Just for being there and what you were doing, or you just they didn't want you there. Everything, all of the above, all of the above. I there was one, this one case, boy. I, oh, yeah, they're all saying say more. <laughs> this one night, Halloween night. I'm going back 35 years plus. I went. The a woman called. She was eight months pregnant. She had all kinds of activity going on. We already had been there investigating and everything. Well. We have found out that the husband was a high priest in Satanism. Oh and it was a darker branch of the stuff that was being practiced and everything was going crazy. He was trying to get away from it. They didn't want to let him go. And they, she had called. I felt bad for her. I drove up to the house. And next thing I know, the house was surrounded by people and all these crazy things. The phone rang. Lorraine had called me, her and Ed were at a lecture and she, you know, she, uh, had called my house and Cheryl had said, well, Johnny went up to go to that house, you know, and blah, 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 blah. And lo that's how Lorraine, she goes, what are you doing? And I go, well, she was freaked out and she goes, get out of there. And, you know, I was like, all right. And I'm like, then I went out on the porch. There was people there. 
and they were all standing around. There were cars of people. I got into my car so freaking fast going 99 miles an hour. They were following me. It, it was just total mayhem, total oh mayhem. I'll never, forget, I'll never forget that. And the following day I was at, went up the house and I was sitting at the table. And my uncle looked at me. He goes, did you learn a lesson? Yeah. I go, F yeah. I said, I'll never go anywhere by myself ever again <laughs> like that. And he goes, I cannot believe you took the chance going up there like that. I said, how did I know that was going to happen? Oh my he goes, God. John, you knew what we were dealing with. And I go, but I didn't think there you know, was going to be any ramification at that point. But there was. So, again, I've never walked into a place, knock on wood, where I've seen signs of the occult or Satanism or anything like that. Oh, I have. Oh, I have. Again, you still follow up and try to depends on it, 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 it depends on the circumstances. Depends on what is going on and how oh, that interested would freak me the, out. How, well, it wakes you up and it makes you realize that there's a lot of things that go on in this world that people just would not believe they just, if, the majority of people just would not believe that these things occur and happen, you know, and again, I always, you know, um, take my step back when talking about anything on the demonology end of my work, you know, that I very right, seldomly right. Uh, right. go deep into talking about any of that stuff. So, but if you, if you think again, just remove religion from the, you know, the whole, part of it, um, it, you know, even though you can't, if you're dealing with people that, that live and breathe negative, hateful things, and literally they're, they're like a machine feeding the energy around them. And if they're, they're doing ritualistic stuff and, you know, blood and whatever, I mean, that is like building a monster. Even if let, let's say there, there, there's no demon devil, whatever, that kind of negative, you know what I mean? Consolidation of just negative hate energy is enough to just cause, you know, I've, really I've, bad I've things. I've, you I've, would dealt, think. I've dealt with an occult when I was younger. Wow. That, that I, was, just, I was kidnapped from a guy that, who was in a cult. Nuts. So I, I do. I, what you're talking about, I understand mm -hmm. 100%. Wow. I would never put myself, I, I give you all the credit in the yeah, world. Yeah, I would I, turn I think around and walk right back out. I say, wouldn't, mm -hmm. but he's never experienced that. So he right. doesn't. See, he how you you got to remember, I you know, thirty five years ago, you know that that fear level was different from what, right. you know, the as you get involved with that stuff or you experience that stuff, you know, if that doesn't help you to get a better comprehension, right, right, of what goes on, right, you know that that's the important element, right, because again, too, with with certain elements and certain things. There's a lot of my paranormal group. I won't even let them get involved with certain things that I do. Well, I that's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you if yeah. you, um, like now, you, you still do cases. Oh, and, yeah. But are, do you really kind of, like, unlike, like you said, that when you were younger, do you re are you really more stringent in the type of cases you'll take on and the things you will go look at or look into? Depends. Uh, if I'm working with people in a spiritual realm, you know, that's a, a totally different uh, environment, John. Okay. That's a totally different way of me handling something and looking at things where, you know, I might get involved with um, a particular uh, circumstances where a person might need help or a spiritual person, a clergy person might be trying to help a individual or something. So I would look at that totally differently. Now, if somebody just calls me up off the clear blue and they're telling me, you know, there's some whacked out stuff happening in their house and blah, 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 blah. And that it's involved with some things on a darker level. That's going to take me some time to think about and how I'm going to handle it. So you, um, does, does the church, or clergy type of people, did they still contact you and ask you to work on things or look into things? Absolutely, John. I really? Still, I'm still very involved. I've, wow. I, See, I didn't know any of that. I thought you were. Because really I don't, I don't, 
I don't ever bring it up. I don't talk about it. There's no, I have, to me, it's, it's just what I do. Right. I just do it. I don't think anything of it. And I don't ever, you know, there's a lot of spirit. I say, I always refer to spiritual people. You know, when I talk about ministers, priests, rabbis, right, right, any right. of them guys, I just call them spiritual people. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of them. You got to remember over 50 years, I established a yeah. lot of good friendships. Yep. And if they need me, I'm going to help them. Right. Especially if I know what their intent and purpose is, we're trying to help somebody. I'm going to help them. I'll do what I can. And right. I am smart enough and wise enough to say, hey, Padre, get the hell away from this one. There's nothing you're going to be able to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I will do that. I, I have been known to do that. But so, I, but thank you for saying that because we come across so many people in this field who say they can handle and do everything. Well, that's nice. I'm glad to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's so when you when you when you do something like that, let's say hypothetically they they contact you, do you go yourself or do you have a group of people that you automatically get involved? I, I don't. Okay, I don't want to get to go too far down that road okay. down with a lot of that stuff. But there, there's. It, it, okay, I will say this. Do I bring my paranormal group, my the bunch of people I have within right. my group right. into something that would pertain to something I got involved with, with a spiritual person? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Okay. No. Nope. Wow. Yeah. We definitely learned a lot tonight. I mean, again, I'm curious how many dolls are in that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm river not, by him. I'm not but, shocked. Uh, I mean, I, they I don't stay, they don't stay there because the, the current is so brutal. That's the only reason I like using that one because the, it's the Housatonic River and you can't even swim in it or anything because that current, because I'm right at the basin and when it comes down in, it just takes everything. If you fall in, you, 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 you wouldn't even be able to swim out of it. That's why the the town two the, the place two towns over from John is really haunted because all these objects are washing up <laughs> <laughs> on the shore over there. Anyway, John, thanks for coming on. John will be if you missed out on um, Camp Evans uh, Info Age Building, which is March 9th, There's only two spots left for that one. If you want them, New Jersey Paranormal at Yahoo.com. But John will be back with us in May. I'm not quite sure the exact day with Cody and Satori at Camp Evans. So that'll be really good because I'm sure Cody and Satori may bring a haunted object or two. John will be there. You get to hang out with us. You get to hang out with them. And that, that should be a really cool night. Something we've been Absolutely. trying to do for a while. I would love to get, not maybe not an event, but just have him come visit the mine. He won't do it. He's not coming. There. I had the bejeebie He's scared out of me this last time. I would love to get your take on that place. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have to set up the Hinsdale thing, though. I'll, I'll reach out to, to Dan. Like you said, when the weather gets nice, maybe like June, like early June-ish. That'd be good. No, huh? no, no. I want to be real safe. Make it July or <laughs> <laughs> You think it could still snow in no, Buffalo? I'm jo I'm jo no, I'm joking. Because <laughs> that, that the, the Hinsdale house is out in the boonies. Oh, it there, there, There's nothing right. around that. Yeah. No. Nothing yeah. there. So, I mean, but, uh, you're, yeah, no. you're there, you're there. Yeah. But no, the mind thing, we'll pull that together one of these times. We'll I'll, uh, definitely go check that out. Oh, you'd love it. Oh, I, I would you, love know, you know you know what's going to happen. I'm going to like it. it and want to end up doing a couple of events there. Oh, you, you would love it. Listen, love it. I, I, they were in a, in a dynamite area and I was off out by myself oh, to the goes. side. And something happened out there, and boy, I was in that room quicker than lightning. I have the video, John, of her running and saying the F word the whole way. It was stretched out. F, and she's screaming and running. Pretty good video. That mind's scary. <laughs> you wouldn't bring her with you, John, if you were going anywhere. Trust me. She's not uh, built for that. No, we'll pull, we'll pull that together. All right, John. Thanks again for joining us. Good seeing you. Feel better. Take care, guys. Take Thank care. God. There you go. The legend. The legend. Now you know why I call the guy the legend. Do you hear the stuff that he's done in his career from the time he was, you know, younger with the Warrens to all the way now? The guy is a legend. He's done more than 
probably 90% of the people in the paranormal will ever do experience so much dealt with extreme hauntings, you know, spiritual hauntings. I mean, the guy is just, if you don't know who he is, you should John Zappas Google him. I mean, he is to be respected in this field for sure. There's and, so uh, much to him than, than any of you really realize. And like you said, um, he, do, he doesn't tell a lot of things, but boy, if, if he did, there's a lot of things that we could learn from him a lot. All right, guys, my battery's going down on my phone. So thank you for watching. Uh, we'll be back soon, but um, have a good night. Stay safe, stay healthy, and please always remember to be kind to each other. Night, everybody.